So you are looking for batteries for your off-grid energy setup and you're wondering which batteries perform the best, which ones last the longest, how do I get the best deal out there in the market and which kind of batteries should I really look out for and not buy. Well in this video I will give you a few basic principles that you can use to compare any kind of battery that you're looking at on a side-by-side -side basis. Before we go ahead let me introduce myself. My name is Jesse, I'm a renewable energy engineer and I'm specialized in off-grid battery-based solar energy systems. I have run companies in the design and installation of off-grid solar energy systems and I've held the position of energy officer for the United Nations. I founded the company Solar Solution through which I provide videos such as this. I share my knowledge and experience through articles and I provide personal direct support through services on my website. So let's get started. I'll keep this video fairly short and I'll divide it into only two sections. First section will look at the actual capacity of the battery. So what kind of consequences does it have when you're looking at 2 volt, 6 volt, 12 volt batteries? What does it actually mean, the amp hour rating, the watt hour or kilowatt hour rating? And last but not least, what about the discharge rating, the, the C rate, etc. What does it all mean? In the second section, we'll look at what kind of lifetime you can actually expect for certain batteries. We'll look at the depth of discharge figures and how you can use this to your advantage. And of course, the cycles. What does it mean and what kind of cycles are you looking for? And how does it affect the lifetime of your battery? So let's start by looking at the capacity of the batteries. I want to mention something about the voltages. So the typical voltages that you can find out there are the 2 volt, 6 volt and 12 volt. The main reason why the different voltages is because they're all built of individual battery cells. One battery cell consisting of lead plates submerged into electrolyte creates 2 volts. If you combine 3 cells in series, you make 6 volts. If you combine 6 cells in series, you make a 12 volt battery. So that's the basic difference between these batteries. So the other figure I want to mention is the amp hour rating of a battery. So the amp hour rating indicates the amount of amps, the amount of electricity, that you can withdraw from a battery during an amount of time. So for example, if a battery has a 100 amp hour rating, you can withdraw 100 amps during one hour and it will be empty. Or you can withdraw 10 amps during 10 hours and then it will be empty. So that is the amp hour rating and it's a very important number for a battery. Now the other value closely related to the amp hour rating is the C rate or the discharge rate. So what is important for you to understand is that if you would empty a battery in a small amount of time, the total amount of energy that would you be able to get out of the battery is less than if you would take the same battery but empty it over a longer amount of time. So the same battery, empty it quickly, low energy, empty it slowly, more energy. So the C rate indicates the amount of amp hour, the amount of energy that you can withdraw out of the battery if you completely empty the battery in a certain amount of time. So a C rate of C2 indicates the amount of amp hours if you empty the battery in 2 hours. C10, the amount of energy we can withdraw in 10 hours, etc. So typically for off-grid energy situations, you're looking for the C10 or the C20 rate. Now the last thing I want to mention about the capacity of the batteries is the value which in my opinion is one of the most important ones. What you are ultimately interested in is the amount of power that you can store in a battery. And perhaps you remember that power is a result of the voltage and the amperage. So if you would compare a 12 volt battery that has a 10 amp hour rating, the total amount of power that you can store in this battery is 120 watt hours. If you now take a 2 volt battery that also has a 10 amp hour rating, the total amount of power in this battery is only 20 watt hours. So my suggestion is if you compare batteries side by side on a capacity basis, calculate the watt hour, the kilowatt hour ratings, and then compare them like that. So now let's look how we can compare batteries based on the lifetime expectancy. So there are two things I would like you to understand. The first one is the depth of discharge, or the DOD, and the total amount of cycles that you can expect to get from a battery. The depth of discharge indicates the total amount of power you would withdraw from the battery before you'll start to recharge it again. The unit used is percentage. So if you would have a 200 amp hour battery and you would normally withdraw 100 amp hours before you start to recharge it again, your typical depth of discharge is 50%. Now a battery cycle refers to the process whereby a battery is 100% full. You would then discharge it until the typical DOD 
then charge it back again to 100% state of charge. This is one battery cycle. So this brings us to the final point on how you can predict the lifetime for your battery. With the depth of discharge number, you can go into the specification sheet of a certain battery and here you'll find a graph that indicates the relationship between the depth of discharge and the total amount of cycles that the battery will give you. So let me give you an example of what this means. If you have established that you're using half of your battery's capacity on a typical day, so 50% depth of discharge, you look in the graph and this graph will tell you, for example, a thousand cycles. Then if you would discharge and charge your battery once a day to 50%, you can do this a thousand days in a row before you reach the end of lifetime of the battery. But if you discharge to 50% and charge it back up and do this twice a day, you can do it for 500 days in a row before you reach the end of lifetime of the battery. But now here's an interesting thing for you to remember. The battery industry worked with this term, battery end of lifetime. But what does it actually mean? Well, they consider that a battery has reached its end of lifetime when the usable capacity of the battery has been reduced by 20%. So now a question for you. If there's something else that you'd like to learn more about, let me know in the comments below and I'll use this as inspiration to provide more videos for you or for others. Of course, if you like the video, it's always nice to hear, so give me a thumbs up. So that's all for now and I'll see you in the next video.